today we're going outside the great city of Edom. We're going through the forests and the fields and looking at some of the more special locations from the First World War. We're going to start at one of the top secret German gun installations where one of the huge Krupp guns was installed. And after that, we're going to three distinct bunkers nearby. No one has given us a really satisfactory explanation exactly to what they were, but there are some options. So we're going to go through these forensically to take a look at exactly what they were. And after that, I am taking you to the experimental test bunker village that Germans built and hid in the forests. So many things are hiding in the forests out here, you'll see. Driving down French roads, as driving down with most roads in Europe, there are strange things just lying about. I suppose this 12-inch uh, naval gun is not exactly what I had expected sitting in the middle of a forest. Please tell me why there's a 12-inch naval gun lying in the forest. Well, it's meant to represent uh, the kind of naval gun that was here in 1915, 1916. This is the site of the Canon de Duzet, which uh, fired the very first shot in the Battle of Adun. Her shell was the signal for all the other 1,500-odd cannons to open up. So there's and a French 15-centimeter? 15, 15 uh, no, the German was a 3380, 15-inch, 380-millimeter. And this one is... Uh, I think it's a 12 inch, I think from memory, as it said. Was this installed on one of the ships or didn't it, did it not make no, it? No, no, they just brought this from a naval base in uh, Brittany. They have a whole pile of cannons just lying around in the rain, rusting slowly, which is <laughs> hurtful, yes. Exciting. Heartbreaking yeah. to yeah. some point. But at least, uh, yeah. so it is strictly to forbidden to climb on the cannon. Why? What are you going to you? break? <laughs> it's like I'm sorry, like it's like going down to the White Cliffs at Dover. Danger of falling, they say. No shit, yeah. And at Etre. Now why are there recoil cylinders there? That's kind of what I keep thinking. I mean, but this is what this uh, that's where the swivel good. is. Yeah. By the sign, and here's the, the breach. Oh, sorry, I'm no, walking in front of you. And this is the breach. Oh, they've shoved something inside it. They've welded it up. Of course they did. They've shoved something in the front of it, it is, as well. Hey, yeah, there we are. It's a... It's a 300, 30 centimeter, to be about 12 inch, uh, model 1906. This one was built in 1908. 1908? Yeah. That's a very large piece of equipment for 1908. Yep. I really wish they mounted in a turret, or what, what, what was it mounted on then? Rail? Uh, no, it was mounted on uh, Dreadnought battleships. No, but the one that was here originally. Oh, this one. one. No, you'll see where this one is. There's no. a gigantic... Um, I see bunkers. Yep, and those are the ammunition bunkers. Oh. <laughs> Stupid leads the way. <laughs> oh, look. Look at that ammunition entrance there. Doesn't that remind you of something? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Is that a rail cart sitting? Is that a rail cart sitting in front of it? So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a rail cart for the ammunition shells. This looks like a miniature version. It does, doesn't it? Oh no, it's dangerous. Do not wait. You may fall in and drown. I can I go one day without hearing that? <laughs> I mean, we're one step away from just having bathtubs labeled with warning signs. Yeah. This is frogs or ducks? Maybe it's ducks eating the frogs. Um, I'm guessing this thing would be here for a reason. Yeah, that's the minute that went in and out of these tunnels. And those are the rails that we just saw, just to prove the yeah. point. Except these were built by who built this? Venture Drum. Germans. The end of 1915 and uh, beginning of 1916. What kind of wildlife is in there? Well, it's nice for them to put up the fence so you can walk around it. <laughs> I'm just, I, it's, really, seriously. Why is there a grate over a hole? Uh, it's an air duct to the underground uh, bunker. Um, I'm guessing the underground bunker is significantly flooded. 
Uh, yes, it does look like it after all the weather we've been having. Okay, so and here's a little vent in the roof which we didn't see. Interesting. Let's have a look what we've got. Right. That is the site that they put uh, red on to stop you falling in the mm. There's this. The, the entrance to the underground ammunition bunker. This must be over there. Uh, on the 21st of February 1916, at 7.15 in the morning, the 15-inch ex-naval gun which was brought here and set up specifically to, for long-range bombardment, when that opened fire, they aimed at the Cathedral of Verdun and it was the signal for all the other 1,500 guns to join in. Now, you have uh, various underground ammunition bunkers here, uh, all served by 60-centimeter um, gauge rail lines. And there's a, a little wagon for carrying the shells or the, the ammunition, which is up, positioned outside one of the entrances. There are air shaft entries, etc. There are troop bunkers, I think, here, because they were expecting the French to come back at them with counter battery fire. So they would have uh, had protection well, while that was going on. When did they have time to build all this? They secretly built all this at the end of 1915 when planning for their their attempt to crush the French army. They were planning uh, an artillery battle to, to crush the French army through a firepower, to lure them into, what shall we say, um, a desirable spot. The French, they knew the French would fight tooth and nail to save Verdun because it was the birthplace of France. With the Treaty of Verdun in 843 that divided up Charlemagne's empire and created, if you like, France to the west, Germany to the east, and uh, Lotharingia, the modern day Lorraine, in the center. And so this is the birthplace of France, Verdun, and also the birthplace of Germany, a very significant place. They knew the French, being highly emotive, would rush in to defend it, to the last man and the last cartridge, and that's what they were going to do. But the German, and the German trap failed, because the French army actually uh, first stopped them on several fronts and finally pushed them back to the starting point. So at the end it was a draw. So how far are we from the lieutenant colonel's bunker oh, that we went oh, to. Oh gosh. Because um, that was the same day his fighting started. His battle started on this day as well. Yes. Holy fuck. What the hell is that? Something doesn't like this. Those are not, those are not frogs. Oh, the fuck they are. I've seen horror movies start this way. Dinosaurs, I think. <laughs> you have the, what the you know, those killers, the little the ones that run through the forest after you. Uh, you know what, I, I, I'm saying we, we need a production minute and just find out what the hell this is because... What? That's the giant um, cow-sized frogs. They must be frogs. Oh, that shut you up, did it? Uh. Alright, where are you? Oh yeah, that's where they are. Well, the French were completely overwhelmed. They're, uh, they're close range gun batteries were simply swamped by the German fire. Mostly um, 75s, some 120s and 155s that had been dragged off the ramparts of the fortresses to make up for the 75s that had been lost or captured or just exploded or had been worn out in the first two years of the war. And so you've got these ancient cannons with uh, a fair bit of range on them, but nothing like this 15-inch here. This could fire uh, unopposed. And, and he could fire at any, any position anywhere near the Verdun battlefield? Yes, yes, it could, it could range out to Verdun, all around the battlefield. Well, perhaps not the south of Verdun. The, the little ouvrage uh, which is there, which is a rest area, was never actually bombarded. Perhaps the Germans didn't know it was there. But there's nothing that could shoot back at this thing uh, until the French brought up there. They're rail guns. The biggest one was a 400 millimeter on rails, which is uh, what, nearly 16 inch, bigger than the gun here. And that could take it out. <laughs> so was it ever taken out? or No, this, it was never taken this out. This kept firing until it was overrun? This kept firing, yep. Well, until, no, until it was dismantled and taken away. Oh, the Germans brought it with them when they retreated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, ooh. yeah. So it wasn't even over, well, the, eventually it was overrun, but the position was overrun. The position was overrun, yeah. So yeah. They were, they were too, when the, finally the retreat came, mm -hmm. the Germans retreated in good order. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, this yeah. is not something you pack up overnight oh, and stick no. on a they, little... They took all their guns with them. 
But I mean, the gentleman found was. The entrance is over here. L'entrée est par ici. Yeah, the Germans could fire away all day long and nobody could do anything to stop them. No. Except air attack. But then, because air attack on something like this is not really going to do very much harm, is it? No. And the Germans prepped for this attack, so they had. Well, superiority at this time. Around, yeah. So now this was a protective. Sh uh, what was this? this is a tunnel, an ammunition tunnel. The, the ammunition tunnel. Middle, yeah. So this is where the so the rail will come down to a magazine down here at the end. Uh, yeah, well, the shaft will be stored here, here in the tunnel. Oops. And here's one of the. And here's one of the. An air shaft. One of the air shafts. Yeah. And there's air shafts all the way throughout because. Well, the, the small trains, they would still be running on coal steam engines or no, were they electric? No, diesel engines. Full diesel engines. Yeah. So they would still, you still need a little air or this would fill with smoke. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Uh, yeah. There's a crew over there. Yes. <laughs> I have the waterproof boots in the car. I don't remember these, unfortunately. But this is very complex. Is it, isn't it British remained? It really is. Yes. Yeah, that looks like a drain on the right with a cover over it. Can you see? There's a pan up here on the floor. Yeah, I know. This covers up a big hole in the floor. Yeah, that's a drain. Yeah. A little, you have the rebar, a little bit of tiny rebar. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's built really, really solid. No, they're relying on the corrugated sheeting to, uh, yeah. and then putting concrete on the top of that. No, but it's not that thick. No. This is 50, 40, 50 centimeters, 40 maybe. Yeah. Mm. Oh, enough to do the job. Yeah. Because it will be covered in uh, camouflage netting. Yeah. Well. And this is just wide enough for, to, to take the rail with drain on one side. And yeah, but it's also lifted up in the middle, but probably because of branches, roots, and tree roots yeah. in time. World War One artillery tunnel. Slightly underwater. Shock and surprise. Built specifically to supply the big cannon, preparing for the attack. The big attack that was supposed to win the Germans. Verdun. It did fail. It did not fail in killing a whole lot of people. A lot of soldiers had to give up their lives, but that is not new in this war, where millions would die. A lot of them took us uh, purely bad tactical positions. Now, how deep the underground is here, it's hard to tell. So here is a little storage room, and these shelves were enormous. So one wonder how much you could actually store here, given how much firing that was going on. And you can actually see the remnants of the train tracks here. through to the other side. Have you been here? There's another tunnel entrance. And there's a whole, come around, come around on the outside. Yeah, come, yeah, because it gets wet in here. But come around on the outside because there's the other tunnel 
And then there's the whole mount for the train tracks. And a crane. This is really something. This really is something. So that will be where the supply would come from. And this is the other tunnel. So there are two tunnels. On the air vents up here. Oh, the trees are coming down. So, okay, so I'm going to put it there not. This is just gorgeous. This is just amazing. So you have am so you have two ammunition storages in there, yeah. where the trains could go, yeah. and they built up the whole protective banks here for the for the rail. And the rail is oh, am I? Is it it's actually a line now? What am I walking on? Yes, here's one of the rails. There's actually one of the rails. Yeah. Ah, it's going to get a bit deep there. <laughs> well, I can come up the bank now. And this, I'm getting, guessing would be the switching station for the rail. Aha, uh -huh, the points are there. Yeah, the points will be there. So there'll be a lever and a Yeah, you go cable left, left, right. Lever. Yeah. That will be there. They built a miniature rail line. Look at the slab of concrete on the right. Fantastic, isn't it? I mean, this really is fantastic. They, they built all this infrastructure awesome. to bring up ammunition. Yeah. So the tra the rail would probably split up here as well. So there would be storage bunkers further back here. Somewhere, somewhere, anywhere. Or there'd be a rail station uh, depot. And there's a bunker over there as well or something. There's a little yeah. mount stand something. That is impressive. That is very, very, very cool. Oh. The remnants of the rails are still here. I'm, I'm surprised that they really are. And, oh, there's a thing. Well, this is a national monument. Well, usually they manage to screw them up before they become national monuments. <laughs> yeah, this gets a little deep. I don't think that's mud. That's just kind of floating on the water, uh, isn't it? Yeah. So yes. we'll, we'll not go over there. <laughs> we'll maybe follow on a safe distance on the path and see what comes up. Oh, I don't think there's much else down there. So this is a rail gap over the... Uh, it'll be further. And it'll be further. Mm -hmm. I'm just... Not the other part. Oh, well, at least they left speed. some of them. Must be there. I mean, the farmers took a lot of them, didn't they? Yeah, like I said, you have to start protecting things way before they become national monuments. Yeah. Because let's go back. Uh, let's go back the roundabout way. I, I don't know why. But it looks like this path would have had. It looks like it has some age to it. Might with have been another railway line. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, was there the banks built up yeah. on the side? Yeah. The railway line came in there all right. But, see, they may have had a, a main line, main line gauge yeah. coming in here. To yeah. Put it on the small that line. is about that. That is ow, very close to the firing position, though. But it certainly is wide enough. Yeah. 
and there are no there's no trees that has grown up in the path of it. So that would be gravel underpinning. Could be, that's what I was thinking. A little bit of dirt and that's why. Oh that definitely looks like a like a railway line there. It 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 has that width to it. Yeah. And little banks built up. It's almost it's almost strange to think in this little forest have a, a big train come all this way up, but there's a corner there. Yeah, that's definitely a railway line. Coming in to bring the shells and the ammunition. And they laid thousands of kilometers of mini and large rail. I mean, ever since before the Franco-Prussian War, everybody seemed to know how important rail was. There would be a lot of interesting excavation you could do out here by following some of these. I mean, I'm sure somebody has done. No, no, um, French historians, what should we say? They may be locally minded and they, they get an idea fixed in their heads and they, they will go all out to justify that. They won't do any, um, what should we say, open-minded research. Ah. They won't walk about and say, let's see what we can find and let's really? talk about it afterwards. No, nope. it's got to be, my theory is, brother. Every time you have a theory, if you set out to prove that theory, you will. Then you. Now a few of the things we do know from this place. From the fall of 1914, Verdun was two-thirds surrounded by the German 5th Army, and the Germans brought off heavy guns in order to force a resolution in the West. The general intention at Verdun was an extremely important historical town to the French, and the Germans knew it. They also knew that the French would do everything they could to defend it. Thus, a battle of attrition would be the right thing here. <laughs> Oh, there was no grill over it in the German days, was there? That's... I mean, there might have been something over it. Danger. About 30 super heavy guns were installed on the Western Front by the Germans during the First World War. They were manufactured by Krupp, and they had an average range of 49 kilometers. And being placed about 25 kilometers northeast of the city, this gun could dominate the entire area. The entire gun with mount weighed about 220 tons, and it was very much set up like it would have been on a ship, and it was operated by marine commandos as well. The Germans would, in order to disguise its location, had the surrounding guns fire at the same time as Lange Max. This would make it harder for French observation to pinpoint the location and expose it to counter-battery fire. It also had an elaborate support system, and the shells were on average 750 kilos. The interesting thing is that this gun was a direct result of the British Dreadnought battleships line built in 1906 and on. These revolutionized the ship race and with them the new long-range naval guns. This, of course, spurred on the Germans to begin their shipbuilding program with their new large ship guns. But as World War I began, Krupp was still in the testing phase of the 38cm SKL-45 as had been intended for the battleships, but the shipbuilding program had found itself behind schedule. And as the German army was now stalled in front of Verdun, two of these 38cm guns were brought up initially. They were still in the testing phase, and initially ranges were 20,250 meters. Initially, these guns, to give them more range, the floor of the gun mounting was tilted at 5 degrees, allowing for the range of 27,000 meters. The first two forts on the receiving end of these two guns was Fort Douaumont that we already visited and Fort Vaux that we will go visit next time. In the meantime, Krupp had developed mounts, new mounts, with new ballistic testing and had obtained a range of 49 kilometers and later with a shell of 3,400 kilograms, a range of 62 kilometers with a shell that would actually reach the stratosphere. In October 1914, two more guns and special mounts were ordered as the Russian front now stabilized. A total of eight guns were built around Verdun. Well, that's the interesting thing, because this is a ventilation shaft. Uh, oh, well, there is another tunnel there. And there's a phone. Ah, no, that's how they, did they bring the shells in there? Yeah, 
They line that up. They, no, they're not. There's a steps down, idiot. How do you get the shells into the... That's why they let for oh. Another truck. There's a bunker entrance here, or a tunnel entrance here, next to the delightfully large shell. And guess what? That is an APC armor piece in cat. They weren't firing those at the dam, were they? <laughs> so the original one was standing. Yeah, no, they probably weren't. No, they wouldn't fire cat. Not unless they were deliberately shooting at a hardened target, and they really weren't at that time, were they? You'd be hard put to hit the turret on the top of the room. So what is... This could be the entrance to whatever that is. Since it's sealed off and there's stairs going down into the water. Yes, this is another entrance to the tunnel. Or it's a troop shelter? No, this is for the tunnel. Yeah, well, it's going down. And it's flooded. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, it's, it's cr yeah, it, it, it something something hit it in some in some fashion. Oh. But if this would go down to the other grate over here, yeah. yeah. But then again, why would you leave an open grate in a place that's known for mud and water? Yeah. Oh, they'd have pumps. Yeah. Interesting. Well, oh, look, there's something was there. there. Oh yeah, there's another rail coming out, uh, coming out from that one and coming all the way, probably in under, in into the gun. Yeah, of course. This is this is where the, uh, yeah, the powder, the, um, yeah, the, the shell cases. I wonder if there's any photos of this before they dismantle it. Ah. That'll be interesting to see. See, this could have been a little tunnel leading into there. Well, look, there's a, a, a concrete floor here as part of the collapse. Yeah, and that probably could be part of the back of the roof of that. Yeah. There could be a shell that could have hit here, a French shell, yeah, and broke the back of it at yeah. some point. No, that, like in the naval practice, they'd separate the shell rooms on the, uh, on the, on the, the well, I'll just take a peek down here until it gets so yeah. deep that it's no longer fun. <laughs> so this is the other bunker, on from the other side. Well, there's a tunnel from the other side. This is a little deeper than I thought. Oh well. At least it's a flooded World War I bunker, which is really cool in itself. Now what is interesting is there's a third entrance. Now that leads up to the cannon, and then there's that. Don't really know where that leads. And then that down to where the splitter was, where the main rails were. And I'm right above, right below, an air intake. And given how low the roof is to where I am, I'm thinking this was probably full of stuff. This is interesting. So there's another exit there that collapsed or another tunnel that continued. See, World War I is just as fascinating as World War II. Very, very interesting. And for mud and silt and crap. But that is hardly new. 
Yeah, I know. I saw there's another entrance there or exit. I'm coming around. I'm coming out the front door and we'll call this the front door. But as you come up, you come up to the main cannon position. To the right of us, this is the other tunnel down there. And then behind me here, Mr. Rogers has found something interesting. Where are you? I'm here. Oh, this end. Yeah. <laughs> I'm this is interesting. This is where I just was. Yeah, this tunnel splits up again inside. Uh -huh. oh, the, oh, yeah, there is a staircase. Okay, so this will just be the staircase to take you in there. That has somewhat collapsed. Yeah. I think, yeah, this is collapsed. There's a staircase in here. I guess it would make sense that you can walk in here in a, a different way than the train is going in and out. Yeah. And they've uh, been doing so for a very long time. Uh, 105 years, or 106 years since they built it. Sneakily. Imagine building this with nobody noticing. In the woods. Lots of cement, a lot of metal, a lot of resources. Yeah. And of course, if you have ears of premier, if you have, if you have air superiority, <laughs> yes. then you can sort of achieve things. Oh, on that main line, that would bring the barrel in, wouldn't it? it yeah, oh, there would have to be something, yeah. You couldn't bring that in by road. It would be no, no. So you bring that in by night on a train. Yeah. And there's so much silt in there that the floor is raised a good 20, 50. 20, 30 centimeters, 50 maybe, because the roof is very low. The, the roof is lower to the ground than it should be. I wonder how many they fired from here. Well, so battle of the done lasted from February to uh, November. So. The sh because the magazines are not very big. The French tried to counter battery fire and tried to aim for the German guns with no luck. They simply lacked the range and accuracy on even their rail guns to do any damage here. But many of the German smaller batteries were removed further back for that reason. Krupp had now also developed and delivered three experimental platforms that could quickly be dismantled. Alright, so this is the command post for the position. And I don't think I can get in. I'm outraged. I can see the mound. Where to build? Yeah, you see how deep uh, underground it is, and I can now see why I can't go in. It is very flooded. Probably no survey. They say it's an underground concrete shutter. Probably the command post. Well, if they're doing me the damn favor of draining the water, <laughs> I can go in, I'll see. <laughs> yeah, steps down here, yeah. Because there seems to be an underground part there, and then back there, so there would be a few different ro separate rooms in there. Yes. I'm thinking. Yes. <sighs> I really have to bring my diving equipment here. Ah. I mean, I would. This I would feel safe da diving in because, I mean, it's a fairly safe square, probably, room. Don't think there's a lot of roots or a lot of things Holes getting. The bottom, yeah. Well, the frogs are in France, so they should be lucky they're still alive. <laughs> and how, how their legs eaten off. <laughs> oh well. And some kilometers down from the large gun position, there's these three bunkers, tunnels supports. It's not entirely clear what they were built for, although they are of the period of the First World War. 
So Roger and I decided we were going to have a look at them and risk our lives by playing with the large bulls that apparently lived in them. We want to see what these possibly could be and have been in use for and the few scenarios have been put on the table. So now I'm going to go through these and tell you all what we see and you can all judge what you think because it's still not entirely clear. They're described as gun shelters, but they, I don't know, I don't know. Looks like there were, there were, sh there were coverings over there, look like doors. Can you see yeah, the middle one? Yeah. yeah, but those two are built slightly different than this one. Yes. They're reputed to be uh, shelters for heavy artillery, aimed at Verdun. Built in late 15, early 16, ready for the attack. They line up in the direction of Verdun, yes. This is 27 kilometers away. So we have one which pretty much looks like a road tunnel without a road. Yeah. It's not very long. But there's nothing around here. There's there's uh, there is a bunker uh, up by the farm somewhere which I took to be a munitions bunker. Which I uh, would have to see it's it's somewhere over there. But you almost think there would have to be a munition bunker closer to these. And if they are for artillery, why didn't they just move in 500 meters further into the woods where they would be under cover from air? You're right out here where everyone can see you. I mean, at that point, air surveillance was a big deal. From the sky here in 1915, it was the middle of 1916 that the French took over, took, took charge of the sky. But, but such curious constructions. The shape of the, the middle one is extremely strange. I can honestly say I've never seen anything like this. And again, back to the location. If this were munition storage, why are they out here? They are a pretty standout target. Even if the Germans had air superiority at the time, you know how th they were smart enough to know how things shift. There's a third. Are they all... So these two, are they identical? I mean, they don't look like they're thick enough. But it also looks like it's been boarded up from this side. So I have to go in from the front. What do you say? Two bulls, you said? Three bulls. Three bulls. Well, that's just priceless, isn't it? The protective wings as if uh, that would protect them from fire from the side but they're not very thick they're really not very thick what the roof there the center yeah you're looking at what what three layers of or three cast layers is this bigger than the other two is it yes, is it's bigger it's but it's shorter so this could be a 42 centimeter howitzer, but that wouldn't have the range to get to the gun from here. Mind you, they've only got to get to the front lines, haven't they? Well, yeah. I, I, well... This is really weird. Really, really weird. Where's uh, Boikmula when we need him to explain ah. this? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, this is one thing about some of the German names during World War I, where you get, where, where the names are just, where you get the nicknames of a Durchburgbulla. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just the nickname you want to go, uh, or Mackensen with his mustache. There's just, some, so there's just some people that you just... And his death said, um, hat. Yes. Oh. And there seemed to be, ah, oh, look, was there like a curtain came down to protect the side, look? There is a little groove up there, yeah. but there's no groove down here for them for it to be a door to. Is the curtain protection to hide it? What's inside? <laughs> I mean, 
grabbing at straws now. Huh? Even if it's a Frenchman with a binocular sitting on the field <laughs> a couple of kilometers away, it would be very hard to hide whatever this was. Yeah. They, they, had to roll, they had to roll it in over an open field from any direction. Yeah. Yes. I guess the old lady over there is not old enough to actually, no, no, to she, actually know or remember. Does, she, does, she did you ever ask her? I said, uh, they, were, they were reputed to be artillery bunkers. She said, no, you can go and look at them. She made no comment. It would be interesting to see if, if it was a family farm, if they have, you know, had some idea. Because, I mean, there, there's something to be said to be in the middle of effing nowhere. And there's just a room. There's nothing. There's no indications inside. As to, there's no shelving. There's no cables, no wires, nothing. It's not a headquarters or building or anything. But even if it was an artillery position, there would have been radio or telephone mounts possibly to direct the fire, wouldn't there? Yes, fire control, yeah, why not? <laughs> it's getting worse. <laughs> Great. See how they do when I start flying drones over them. Uh, those two are identical and this one's like a board again. Is, what's the and if it was any kind of protective a bunker, why didn't you build it into the ground? <laughs> yes. I mean, dig it in, put some dirt over it. Yeah. And it's not really very heavily reinforced. Well, you don't know that it didn't have. I mean, the farmer may have recuperated the land all around. <sighs> Just leaving these for, well, to keep his cows in there. But, but the land wouldn't have been 20 feet above where it is now. If these would have been dug into the ground, then this would be... At least we're, we're 20 feet lower or 30 than it would have been then, and I, I just don't think the land would shift that much. You look at the bomb craters that are still visible today, so there's the the depth of the of the dirt of the of the soil hasn't really changed. So it would probably have been here, maybe camouflaged and whatever. I mean, if it was a munition shelter. I get that if it was a munition shelter, there would be doors on both directions yes. that where the blast would would yeah. be vented out if there was an accident. Yeah. But I don't see any attachments or hatches no. for doors no. or gates. No, no. So then it would be an ammunition shelter where things would just be sitting in the open. In the open yeah. And... So just the rain and wind and snow and everything else. And yeah. again, why would you put... And uh, this was within range of French artillery. Yes. At least, I mean... Well, no, the end of the battle. I mean, the French had 155s and two tens and things like that. They couldn't reach this far out. But but sure, sure even the Germans have built, they must have realized as, as, that, again, the ebb and flow of battle, they might. They built this to be sort of permanent, to protect something from, yeah, yeah. from something that would eventually reach them. Now, a few things have become clear. These are not the same size, the same diameter, the same height, the same width, but they are built in a similar design to what you'd see exits and entrances of gun shelters or munition tunnels of the time. But what do they line up with? As we're standing around here looking at these things, trying to figure out, and we started thinking about it could be train engine shelters. Uh, there are small narrow gauge trains that will be running thousands of kilometers. And, and we're looking at the fence we're trying not to lean on and this is actually a small narrow gauge rail that's been used to reinforce the fence poles. It would be very plausible for a farmer to pick up at that time, this is an old fence, whatever he would see around him. And maybe there were train tracks leading to and from this thing, or these things. At Romania, near the American cemetery, there was a German rail depot and the farmers found thousands of rails there, left. And they made all their field boundaries with them for years after the war. You can still see them today. And that would make perfect sense. That, that brick up there, I don't know if that's where that would have been from. But the, it, it really was an interesting piece of construction because there's a lot of detail. A lot of little curbs and corners. I think the next step would be trying to locate some sort of aerial photography. See if there was a rail lines here during the war. 
I love a good mystery. Just hate it when it's uh, the older it gets, the harder it gets to solve. Yes, and you've got to stumble on the answer. You can't just go to the archive and ask for it. You you mostly find it by accident. Well, you can you? go to the archive and ask for it, but oh uh, yeah, they may not find it. They won't have a clue what you're talking about. So we're looking at the mystery bunkers down there, and there's a little bridge here. But what the first thing that catches my eyes is is another tra uh, rail beam. And look at all these verticals. Are they also? Yeah, those are all rails. These are all rail beams. German rails. Yeah. Yes, they are. So all the fences are made of. Oh yeah, all of them. Yeah. So there must have been somewhat of a surplus of rail on the other side as well and on the other side of the road as well oh yeah there must have been yeah, some sort of storage of rail or they would have pried them from the ground and if there was a rail this bridge would have to have some play maybe this was maybe this maybe the rails would go under the bridge i can't think that that was like the third one on the right was lined up with the stream I think that's it's been canalized through the uh, through the tunnel for some strange reason, <laughs> or the stream has changed direction. Son of a motherless goat! Did uh, you bring a machete? Ah, <laughs> uh, see, that's the other side. See how that looks. Ah, <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, damn it! <laughs> there are nettles everywhere in this thing. Actually, this is the best way. But, I mean... If there was always a stream here, then this bridge would... Okay, either that would marry the bridge and, and the little waterways. What if there wasn't a stream here? So if there's no stream here, I mean that's the same as you'd see the shell World War One shelters were made out of the corrugated metal. In fact, if you really want to stretch the imagination, that's another bunker. These could have started as a bunker, and then you stick a bridge over it. It's always like a little puzzle. You try to piece it together to try to figure out how. And if you're just going to build a bridge, yeah. why are you building? A, uh, why don't you just put a straight wall across? Cheaper, yeah. simpler, easier. Yeah. Why make this these angles on it? Yeah. Unless there's something. I mean, there would be no reason to make a, a design out of this. There's a very thick cable about this this diameter running through the, the pipe. Modern? Yeah, black plastic. Oh yeah, yeah. But the pipe is an old one. Yeah. But I mean, it's a, this is a very elaborate bridge yeah. built for just just for a little piece of waterway. <laughs> it it really is. There's a lot of detail went into this thing. <laughs> for those big uh, the four. Like the pillars at the, uh, yeah. the edges, that's really It may be a coincidence, maybe not, but they are lined up straight with it, with the bridge. The, the, the third one yeah. is pretty much, it is pretty much as hard as you can see, almost lining straight up with here. And... So that could have been a railway line and a stream. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why either, it, uh, unless there is something really special going on here. And of course, the corrugated metal is also down to the sides. So, yeah. So, but you wouldn't put a put rail tunnel on there. On you wouldn't put rails on the metal. But it could have it could have been a shelter. This does line up with the third. The third it, shelter. Yeah. You need water, of course, for your steam engine. So you do need that too. Well, I think this is something where we need to try to find some 
1918 aerial photograph. Yeah. Because the British or French at that time, leading into the last battle of Verdun, would have photographed this place yes. as they're regaining air superiority. So you would think. Alright. I wonder well, if those. Are those two there? Are they sunk down into the ground? Uh, were they the same size as the one on the left? No, because they're smaller. They're also na they're not as wide either. Uh, they're narrower. They, they generally just are smaller. The, the, the diameter of the pipe is smaller. Yeah. Well, there we are. That is a mystery. Yes. A, a major mystery. Love those. <laughs> when I look at these, I find it very hard to not see some shelter or a tunnel for a train to run through or perhaps something to be pulled into, stored inside, or they are very much not very reinforced. However, for the other theories as to what these were, I have a slight problem with it, because they are so different in size, height, width. They do line up on a line in two directions, which means we have to pop out a little bit and look at this from further up. Here you can see them from points of view. You see that the stream, that either contemporary or not, it's hard to tell if this stream was here 120 years ago, but they do line up with it in that sense. However, the other suggestion is that there was a rail bridge running over the three, and the three of them was actually a support for that road bridge or rail bridge. Now, my problem with that theory is Although it does line up a groove in the landscape that's coming from around the town, and seemingly something that used to have been a road, so there could have been a rail bridge on top of these. However, the problem I have with that is they are not the same width. Why would they be that markedly different in size and length if there's only one rail running over them? And what would that have shielded them from a wider stream? Anyway, we're still investigating. As I said, there's still unanswered questions, and it's so much fun to speculate, but we're looking at maps from the time to determine exactly why there would have been bridges like that, if that's what they were. Not far away, there's something even more special that really began things. As you come down this road, and only God knows I have no idea where we're going, I start seeing some indications that things were built here. And I know this was World War I, and we always think back to World War II being the time of bunkers and fortifications, which is not really the case. But where did all the Germans get their ideas for their bunkers and forts and pillboxes? And the same for the French. Well, they must have tested it. Let's go down the road and you'll see something else. This is one of the most amazing places you're ever going to see. When I say World War I, experimental bunker village, do I have your attention? Well. Here it is. Now, uh, that sort of reminds me of my question. Besides being this beautiful scenic forest, uh, where are we and why is there a cement village yep. sitting in here? Now, the Germans hid this away in the forest to build a, an experimental concrete factory to produce bunkers of various sizes and types to try them out. And so, look at that one over there, look, you can see it's sort of molded, very right, with corrugated sheets. In Marger. So, that is the guard uh, building to the camp, the entrance to the camp. Uh, and this is the captain's bungalow. And look what they've done to it. They've decorated it with, uh, with little, little, little pebbles. Isn't that sweet? I am having a flashback or flash forward to the Maybach complex where the bunkers are built to look like a little village. Ah. Is oh, no, no it's, not, it's not meant to look like a little village. This is simply because he was based here for a year or two. So he made it look nice for himself. Okay. And over up there, they're propping up the roof and everything. Yeah, but look at that. They've, they've written his name on it, on it as well. But this was a bunker. I mean, this was fortified. Oh, not necessarily. No? Glass windows. 
This was German. Yeah. Because I'm looking at the nice walls yeah. that were painted. Nice painted walls, yep, yeah, just like home back in Germany. Ah, oh, they were looking off the that they're propping up the roof to us. Yeah, that to 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 I, I'm surprised they're. Well, I'm very happy to see that they're actually trying to save the place. Yeah, yeah. It's the local council. Because one of the guides who trained with me years ago, he, this is his speciality. He, he brings visitors here. And so he must have pushed for somebody to do something about it, you know. I'm still a little. But look at above your head, look, see, there's a big chunk falling off there. Oh, well, above your head, chunk falling, I've heard that before. They built one of everything here to see how they worked, how to yes, yes. How they the, the, the factory was across the other side of the stream to get water to it, but there's not much left of the factory. Just this was the factory here, you know, across the little stream over there. That's the guardhouse, and then you've got all the experimental types of bunkers all the way around. But this is this is really you know home from home, isn't it? Look at the little the little decoration, the frieze. They've they've cut out a stone for him for the captain. I think it's very hard to sort of step away from the sentence experimental bunker village. Um, <laughs> that's one of those things that's kind of hard to... Uh... Shows and, and oh, the, oh, the, 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 the theatre. Oh, yeah, the film theatre. So this was here from 19... When did they build this? 14? 1915, 16. So they built... So they built the experimental buildings and then they occupied them as well. Yeah, they lived they in them. them. Yeah, because they were safe from French reconnaissance under the trees of the forest. The French never knew they were here. Oh, that is sad. That has really collapsed, hasn't it? That, that wasn't like that last time I came here. I know. I th this is side part of the wall here. Oh. They thought they really have to do something. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? The wall's fallen down. Yeah. I'm not seeing I'm not seeing any rebar or any reinforcement sticking out anywhere. No, nope, it's just concrete. Well, there's a re one right there. But that's, well, a, that's pipe. a water pipe or something. Yeah. Mm. Very large stones in the in the gravel and the yes, mixed in with it. Yes. You always think they're a little bit on the too large of a side. But that looks much finer, the cement over there. Mm. And plastered again inside. Why, well, that's probably what that is, yeah. So that doesn't really look like a film theatre. Perhaps the next one is. The next one along is probably the film theatre. This is probably an officer's quarters. Yeah, you see. Yeah, it, it's. Oh, they've got to do some really, really serious work here. Yeah, they really do. But then since it's unique in the world, they think it's worth saving. Which is really fantastic. I agree. Uh, I don't understand why it's not any of the maps I've seen, because I've never heard of this. Oh, no, it's, there's a big website for it. Uh, can't make a, yeah. Is it only in French? Because that's usually yeah, how I miss that's, that's the problem. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's how I usually miss things. They're not in the language I understand. <laughs> Which is really, really effing annoying. <laughs> and look, they had little concrete pathways, those are original. What? So they could walk around in the winter. So all of them are different than all the others. Yep. This is. <laughs> yeah, trying out different forms of putting concrete together. And there's a very ropey looking one over there that you got a lot of scaffolding inside it. I look, some of them are just, uh, you know, uh, semicircular bunkers. I mean, this is like one of the most um, collection of history. <laughs> oh, there's a, yeah, the semicircular bunk is going over there. I mean, we'll just take them one by one, and but but the, it, it, <laughs> this is one of those times where I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, usually have my attention with experimental. When you said we were going to go to the uh, the hidden village, I thought this was one of the villages that had been destroyed in the fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Look, again, we're walking over the original little concrete path to get from one to another. Yep. What is this big thing here? They're going to put a sign on here. Is there a sign on the back of it? Nope, not yet. Ah, no. 
So at least they're, they're doing something to this place. Yes! This is good. Okay, they're also blocking the entrance from me. That's bad. You gotta knock this stuff off. <laughs> this madness has to end. <laughs> Damn That's you. Cool. Oh, it's not blocked, really. There's a bloody key in it too. There's a yeah, proper door. Yes, yes. Alright, fine. You're doing it for the sake of protection. <laughs> but... <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, maybe this is the other... Yeah, they're not going to leave the other end unlocked. You can see through the other end. Spray. I have it in the car. You should have said ah. something. You know I have terminal poison in the car always. <laughs> so this is like a little. This is like a cement Quonset hut. Yeah, that's it. That really exactly what yeah. it is. Listen, listen, that in British terminology. Yeah. Bomb proof. A bomb proof listen. Yeah, it, it is literally an arched dome. That's the entrance. I can see why they wouldn't like people to go in there. Mm, yeah. Except I'm pretty sure that window over there is an opening. Yeah, because it's sniffing through that. Big blocks to fall on your head. Concrete is falling on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you want to learn? You want to learn about history? Yes or no? <laughs> uh, I mean, so is there anywhere in the in the rest of the fields of World War One, are there any of those that were ever built, or did they just stick? So, well, some of these would just be the test beds. Yes. I'm imagining. Try them out. Yeah, that'll resist a that'll resist a, a, a one five five shell or something. But you think they test them, uh, field test them, you know, with real shells? I mean, Perhaps they set off explosives against them, like people did when they were testing ships for torpedo yeah. attack. They put a, a charge against the hull of an old hulk and see what happened. Hmm. That's, it's very, it's very possible. I mean, but then again, what the, what the way, only way really to test this is to stick it on a range and fire artillery shells at it. Exactly. So, um, experimental range here is a waste of time. And, and they would probably have done that in a place like Kummersdorf, or, or they would have done it in Kummersdorf, or they would have done it at uh, Jutburg. Okay. Would they would have, and, and they have. I've been there. Oh, that's a big chunk of roof which is falling in the middle, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, corrugated steel there on the sides. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been to Kummersdorf and I've been to Jutburg, but at Kummersdorf there were a lot of different walls mm -hmm. and wall designs that was tested with artillery. Right. Where they would build all these different thicknesses mm -hmm. and different... Um, the walls that would be like the bunkers. Yeah. And, uh, and they would fire at them with all different things. Yeah. Uh, that was the, you know, that's the whole point. Um, well, like the British and Americans did with armor plate. Exactly. You, you shoot at things because you need to know you need to know how the actual thing works. Yeah. Um, and there was one thing I saw at Kumostov that was very interesting, uh, which was the walls like these that was built, and then in between there was road tar. Ah. Uh, and then when the shells would penetrate, the road tar would heat up, and then that would sort of flow out, so you see it. I don't know why you would ever, n never seen tar in in walls. I mean, it, maybe it's an artillery thing, specific. I've never seen that as insulation or use. So we're, we're still trying to figure work on why that is. So that's, yeah, this is the entrance where you theoretically could get in. But will be nice. on the other side. Oh yes. 
Well, I will say the circular hole that, that's missing there. Looks like a shell hole. It does look like a shell hole. Or, I mean, it could be a regular collapse. I don't really see any rebar or anything holding it. It's a, it's a bat. Probably. I meet a lot of those. We're on, and the corrugated iron has been removed. Or it was used for molding. Yeah. It could also have been taken out by locals. Yeah. But that is interesting how that pile just sits there, which is actually making this a really cool picture. Look at this. Oh, yeah. That is a really, really cool picture of you get the sunlight on the pile. <laughs> Using um, corrugated iron for molds. Wow. Yeah, this is interesting. But, I mean, this is all interesting. This is... Who would have thought something like Experimental Bunker Village would be interesting to me? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is... This is fascinating. I mean, look at this. This is... So, yeah. A little, little chimney on the top, look. Perfect little chimney, like they'd made loads of chimney moldings and brought them to fit the... Uh, the, the this must have, I mean, <laughs> one thing about bunkers is, is since, well, the lines in World War One did not exactly move, like, fluently, I guess, mm -hmm. would be sad to say that they were fast moving, mm -hmm. but you would want to build the bunker fast. Yeah. So if you bring up something like corrugated metal, you just slap it together, yeah. you pour cement inside, and it would be quick, and it would look like this. Yeah. Um, whether it would, uh, whether it should hold, <laughs> is a different story. What is this? There was a lean-to, a shed against it, I think. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. And, and, and came out here. <laughs> but you see, in English, we got, I don't know whether you have an American, we have the phrase, Jerry built, which means something that's been thrown up quick using anything that comes to hand from Jerry the Germans. Uh -huh. Jerry built, I think, the, the Brits brought it back with them from World War I. I mean, Jerry can, that stuck. Yeah. That term stuck forever and ever. Ooh, yeah, you really want to hold this thing up because... Ooh. Yes. Yes. The whole slab's gone. Plop. Yeah. And I didn't, it, it was all here last time I came around. This is recent. Bloody hell. Well, you could almost stand that up. That might be helpful. Yeah. Because I know they put this under the roof, but they may want to have put one under here so that the part doesn't start falling off as well. Yeah. Yeah. But you can easily patch it up, can't you? Just grab a bit of the lumpy bulky. I'm considering how it's built. You would think it wouldn't be that hard to patch it up. This looks like it's been fired upon. It really does. This, this looks like not not something really big, huh? nothing really big and heavy because it's not reinforced. It would have gone straight. Through. It does look. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. It it does look. I mean, this this is there are holes, there are impact holes on this side. Oh yes, yes there are. Okay. And there's a little bit of rebar up on the roof, and a little bit of a thin. Firing slot or a window. Just to hold the window together, yeah. But I mean, these walls are not particularly thick. No. So I'm guessing we're testing barracks or. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a little piece. Is that rebar? Or is that a rebar? went in put the scaffolding up there. <laughs> I'm sure they wore a helmet. <laughs> yes. Just a ton and a half of concrete above them. Yeah, that because them. that'll make big difference. Yep. Whew, yeah, it really does need it. I'm really glad they're trying. And the inside is smooth. Oh. Must have used wood, timber on the inside. Right? Timber shuttle. Mm. Yeah, the outside. box or something. Oh. I, I mean, I really... That's, yeah, substantial uh, supports, aren't they? I mean, I'm really, really glad they're trying to save this. Yeah. I, I just wish they tried, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago. Before it got to this stage. Yeah, this is not, this is hard, this is a hard save. Mm. 
taking a lot of money. Oh, look, there's a little concrete lump there. I don't know what that one is. Tank or something. Probably. Where? There. Oh, oh. Perhaps it was a stand for a water tank or something. They did uh, water supplies here, wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, there the would be. Well, I guess you don't have to worry about holding it up then. <laughs> <laughs> <What's t> <laughs> it looks like they moulded the walls and then they, they just dumped uh, huge chunks of squares of concrete on the top. Yeah. Slabs. Ah. Now here the roof looks in fairly good. There's a little bit, there's some rebar through here as well. Yeah, this was, uh, here you'd have probably have a water system or something sitting up here. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the floor. I was wondering if it was a bathroom or a toilet or something. I don't know. I can't tell. I just see there's this large thing that was sitting over the windows on these mounts. And that's usually lay away oil tanks or great now the trees are falling apart too. Mm, There's a little like a song and a song coming racing at it. <laughs> Rip your leg off the main as well. Oh, look at that one over there. My god. Wow. That is an estate. But they go on and on, don't they? They do. <laughs> I mean this is just this is amazing. <laughs> this really is this is really something. Wooden stand. Well, the little shed looks in good shape. Which is funny because this little shed does not look <laughs> far off from what you've seen for World War II. Yeah. I mean, small sloping roof. This is a design that I've seen uh, in, in many other places. Ah. I mean, you think the successful designs of World War One would be carried on over onto World War II? That was a uh, Achilles heel. Yeah. They used all the uh, they used the kind of armor decks, multi-level of armor decks, and the British had moved way uh, over way before to a big thick armor deck. Yeah, the, the turtle armor. Uh, no, just a solid slab. Uh, uh, six inches of armor, and, and the Germans had sort of one inch, and then two inches, and then one and a half inches, and then three inches, and a shell would go through that like butter. A 15 inch or a 16 inch shell. But you put a 6 inch slab and the shell might just. Well, it'll activate its, its fuse. And then you have a second layer behind as a bursted layer once you've gone through the 6 inch. And that worked. The Bismarck's deck armor did not work. The British had tested the Baden when they tried to scuttle her at Scapa Flow and it did, didn't work. But yeah, that is their film place, I think. Yeah. Um, and they realized that the Germans had run their cables, command cables and power lines, above the armored decks. Yeah, really, really bad idea. Really fatal. You waste uh, a lot of uh, weight on unnecessary gun turrets. You could, if you had been efficient, you could have had the same platform and more for 500, well, 5,000 tons less. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the American twin 5-inch 38 was brilliant. It, 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 it'll deal with a destroyer, it'll deal with a, a bomber, it's got the range. It'll also do a bit of damage to a cruiser, 5 38. The Japanese cruisers have done, what is it, the, oh, the big battle around the Philippines. And then the Shashi was, the, was sunk. No, the Yamato they was sunk. Uh, they came across the landing fleet. Yeah, the, Yama, yeah, the Yamato was sunk. No, 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 that's, oh. that, that's at the end. Oh. This is when the, the Musashi... Uh, Battle of Leyte Gulf. Oh yes. There was a, a, the, the fleet of jeep carriers were being chased down by Japanese heavy cruisers. And if you come across it in my book Torpedo, uh, there was a five inch gun on the rear of one of the jeep carriers. They had sort of bofers and 20 millimeters and one five inch at the stern. And they were firing as fast as they could go <laughs> at the Japanese heavy cruiser. And they hit one of them on the multiple torpedo tubes. 
Ooh. And that's anchor in the end. One five inch hit. In a lucky spot. The five inch was not a bad gun. Yeah, pretty good. And and again, if you can also you also have to do the volume. If if you do an eight inch gun, will the volume? If you can fire more shells with a five inch, yeah. by a by the margin of two or three. So will a volley continuous volley of five inch do more damage than fewer eight inch? Yeah. So I mean, there's there's. Get more hits for start. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah, here the the roof has sort of come down here too. Yeah, I, I think this is. I don't know. It's really interesting. It looks like they were all penetrated. Uh, some of these were penetrated by a shell that blew the inside of the roof. Either that or, either yeah, either that or target practice. But demolition uh, charges because uh, the forest has never been touched. This is the original forest. No, I was thinking about the Germans themselves, but then again. Well, maybe they demolished it as they left. Yeah, they could have done. I mean, you have... you having the fun of living here, in the middle of the forest. And the midges. Ah, big chunks have fallen off there. Please tell me there's more information to be had about this place. There is, there is a, um, a plan at the, uh, the entrance. We didn't come in. We came in just before the entrance. So I think that may be the big yeah. That was not a successful concrete design. I guess not, no. I mean, of course, depending how it ended up that way. Yeah. Look like rocks, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that in 50 years when it's collapsed and overgrown. Uh, people will come by and look at it and they'll just think it's a, uh, it's a rock formation. No, no one will really realize what this is. In some years, got rebar sticking out of the top of this, of the roof. There's actually a lot of rebar sticking out of the roof. Usually, in in World War II, that would be for strengthening further. I wonder what the plan was with that. This is square, which is. Even stranger. So where's that come from? Is that hang on a minute, that's not a curved roof, it's a flat roof. It's an inclined roof. Is I know I know these chunks have fallen off, it may have been curved and they've fallen off the side. That's the problem if you don't pour concrete in one go in a homogeneous uh, block. Then you're going to get problems with it later. Yeah. Yeah, here's this. Here's the, this must have been demolition because right in the center of these buildings. Ah, oh, that's a big hole in everything. Yeah, and right in the center. It, that, that can't be accident. And it can't be target practice because you might have been good, but you would have been a little off the straight of center at some point. Nobody wrote a book about these. Nobody. Oh, wait a minute. You said there was a website in French. I think there's a website. And of course, our uh, our guy, our young guy, uh, he spent his life uh, crawling in and out of these things. So he should know a fair bit about it. A lot of birds twirling around in there, going, uh, "Who are these morons?" Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, this looks pretty new. This can't be good. Hmm. That's made out of. Section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Section. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, if ever there's an interesting place to come and there's a few things over there that look sizable. And is that drag? Is that that almost looks like dragon teeth? You must be kidding me. It can't be. There's no tanks for them to. <laughs> Run out of petrol or something. Yeah, he's shot things at them. Well, the Mauer's a 13mm. I've, I've actually got one of those rounds. It's the rarest round in the world. 
The Mauser are anti-tank 13 millimeter. I know, I did a documentary on anti-tank rifles. Yeah, the tanks to go all, all around, and um, that would go through the front of a British mark, for tank through the engine and up the back. Yep. Oh, it's right up to the bed. What on earth is this? Uh, this could be some of the cement uh, works. Oh, this or, works. I've yeah. I've not been in this bit. This is there is something on the ground, isn't there? Oh, well, it's certainly a drainage system of some sort. And this looks like where you would stick a generator, yeah, or uh, yeah. some sort of equipment, or you could put concrete a mixer or something. concrete mixer. Or this could there could have been pillars up here to a conveyor belt that would lead the cement into into yeah. there. Yes. Ah, now let me the. Uh, the factory part that was buried in the woods when I came here. Couldn't find any. Couldn't find it. Well, here it is. <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> now, of course, if there's a little industry going on, you'd also have to have electricity. And if you need electricity, you'll probably need a big diesel engine. Yep. So, on these four, completely guessing out of context, could have been a big diesel tank. It sort of looks like a stand for a big tank. Uh -huh. Guessing based on what I've seen before, but without somebody who really knows this place. <laughs> it's, it does. And then there's a little bench. Yep. Hell with a bench, put up a sign. Tell me what this is. <laughs> you. You and your damn comfort. Um, these looks like something you see out of World War II as well. This is, must have been what you'd call a successful design. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, although they had a lot of horses, let's be honest, at the time. You see the films about for John, you see the... Um, you know, the, uh, the Wasak Ray with uh, thousands of trucks. And then every other film reel is, is hundreds of horses. Yeah. And, and mules. People always, in propaganda is always much better when you put up your best stuff. <laughs> Look at the roof there. Oh my God. The crunch. Yeah. The film has moved a bit and down she came. Yep. I've never seen this, I've never been over to here before. Yeah, risk of death, do not enter. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I can appreciate that. So one of these are roof sections, or they're, yeah, there must have been walls yeah. that fell over. Yeah, they're the end wall that fell off. Yeah. Didn't they? And then the, the pillars moved outwards and the roof fell. Oh, super glue, enough super glue, you can fix the world. If there's a crack in the earth, you can fix. Now look at this, a tree is going right next to that wall and the wall is still there. I'd have thought that would have brought it down. As long as the tree stays where it is and stops doing something stupid. Perhaps it's propping up the wall. Yeah, that might be. I want another sweet little barrack floor. I want another sweet little barrack floor. <laughs> the cracks at the back. <laughs> I mean, this is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's more rebar. Oh, there's actually a decent amount of rebar on this roof. Oh, yeah. Square. Yeah. Outside, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The ventilation pipes let in the top of the walls. Yeah. And this was molded after the corrugated metal in, on the inside. Ah, right. And, yeah, I don't see any rebar through the crack, so it only seems to be in the roof, which is silly because you probably should prop up the walls with something stronger. Yeah. 
and then well the roof too but unless you uh you want a, shell a bit of shell resistance oh well wow, that's sad the whole wall is wobbling inwards yeah that's bad this one's in very bad nick and that one look, over there looks bloody hell there's another big block over there I mean, how many men could you hold here? About a thousand, I suppose. Five hundred. Five hundred, certainly. I mean, we don't know how much more. And then there might probably going to also going to be some. There probably was some wooden buildings. Yeah, yeah. I really would like to hear, a, see a real story and find out what they really were thinking and doing what they learned from this mm. Mm. that will be very very interesting to see what what intelligence they actually came out with what con what conclusions they made and because some of those conclusions must have been used in World War II as well I mean at some point in time someone came up with the concept of Regelbau that didn't happen until the mid 30s really or late 30s what, sorry? the Regelbau uh, oh, the, standard building. the standard building, oh. but somebody must have based the re some research, all of, also from World War One, on the on the concepts of the Regelbau, what worked, what didn't work. Yeah. So lessons from here must, in one way or another, have been incorporated into World War Two building. It would almost have to have. Which mm. makes it a very significant place. That's what I was thinking, and this looks steel bars of the roof, technical tunnel. Oh yeah. This looks newer, although the roof is missing, which could have been destroyed. But there's some. This looks. This looks like a newer evolution. I, I guess I don't know what else to call it. The walls are thicker. What is the slot in the floor? Uh, that is probably technical, where you run cables. This could have been, say, a generator room. Yeah, yeah. And then you run this. Well, there'd yeah. be a generator in here, or you would have some sort of machinery, radio, oh, radio. Oh, steel bars. Uh, steel girders in the roof. Come in here, young man. Yeah. There's a photo in here, and there's a placket with text, oh. and there's a picture of a cannon. I don't know why the hell there's a picture of a cannon, but. There's a big five the French shells. I think what is it in I have no idea. There's the cannon de Duzy. Yeah. Yeah, this is but that's not the bunker with it. No. <laughs> well there, there, there were several mountains like that in France. That's a seventy-five. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the French seventy-five shell. I mean why is why is <laughs> that here? <laughs> oh, this is their cabin where they, they they had coffee, I suppose, when they're working. It's the one which is the best preserved, isn't it? It probably is, yeah. yeah. It, it is one of the ones that looks... Uh, but why have they got these in enclosures? With well, the stick here, uh, let's go closer. <laughs> hmm. It could, it could, oh, it could be a water pond, it could be... Hey, this one's in the best nick, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that one's immense, and the damage is yeah. terrible. All right. Well, I guess there's only one way of finding out. I'm guessing, could be wrong, but there's probably a hole. Or a water hole, or... I don't see a hole. Here's a little bridge. There's a hole in the fence over there. The way you can that in in the, why? I don't know what they're fencing in. There are three or four of them around here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait a minute! It may be for uh, preserving uh, the greenery. I mean, from the uh, deer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Um, 
to uh, you know, for, for uh, nature. Yeah, new tree, new trees, or an yeah. endangered frog, or something incredibly yeah. stupid. I mean, I don't care. When you stop enormous, expensive projects because of a fucking frog, you, you move the fucking frog. I'm sorry. <laughs> and he's probably just as happy. <laughs> Give him a nice environment and something to eat. Would be in it, yeah. This is the, the first, the entrance, wasn't it? Interesting. Obviously, it's full of water, but that's fine. I, I would think this would be a guard something, yeah. Because why else would there be a. And this would have been part of the, some entrance, or this could have been part of the side wall. It looks like with the grooves in on top there, it looks like it would have been mounted to yeah, something. There's a normal window there, though, there's just a slot that's yeah. in the window. Yeah, like these things. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's not helping that all these pesky plants are growing on it, making it a little hard to see. <laughs> Damn nature. There's a big crack in the wall there. Yeah. I mean, the, the walls are very thin, so oh, yeah, that. experimental, I get. Yeah. Experimental for living, I get. Experimental living for for fighting, probably not so much. So, is that the first one over there? And the bridge and go back again. Oh no, there's the road. Yeah. We go up here to the Anything that does, does not give sustenance to mosquitoes. It's just so nice to see that they're actually restoring this. Look, it looks trying. like a wooden roof, but it's not. It's and a you know it's German because uh, yes, there's a big uh, Maltese cross there. Cruise, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the Maltese cross really dates back to the time of the Crusades. You had a bunch of crusaders besides the Knights Templar and... Whatever I found, I found a hole in the ground with cement walls. And next time we're looking at big guns and big holes and small forts. Behind me is Vanna von Baun's first test stand. Down the road is Diebnus nuclear reactor. Over there is the Maginot Line and all its amazing forts. I'm visiting them all and I'm bringing them to you. So I really appreciate you like, follow and share what I'm doing trying to document all these important historical locations. And if you feel like you want to watch more pictures or documents that are used for these, go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out with my travels, because gasoline and travel and air for you is expensive, uh, my PayPal is there, protectionserviceint.com. You are more than welcome, but you don't have to. I appreciate all your support and all your help, and I love seeing these locations, and I love bringing them to you.